up, I think, for home box office called Remember When, I think is the title. Would you welcome Mr. Dick Cavett? <laughs> I found this today. I know you're going to be on the show, and I want to give a little, uh, you know, class to the show since you're here. Do you know the female pigeon is unable to lay eggs if she's all alone? Well, I shouldn't wonder. No, if she's all alone. If she's all alone, she can't lay eggs? I didn't. I, it's one of these little things they put in newspapers, a filler, you know, to fill out the column. And I, I just wanted to bring this up. In, for, in order for her ovaries to function, she must be able to see another pigeon. If no other pigeon is available, her own reflection in a mirror will do the trick. Is, is that uh, applicable to human beings, I wonder? I, was, I, was, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I brought that up. Uh, well, obviously, I was wrong in bringing it up, but it just, I found this fascinating. Well, how would they know what a female pigeon does? If she's all alone, no one would be there to know. I mean, it's, it's the old, if a tree falls if, in the forest... Is there any sound? There. If there's no under pigeon, or is there, is there an egg? Is there anyone there? Well, there's something to be uh, ex well, that, explored that, in there. That's really good. I'm not sure what it is. Not now, I hope. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if I have anything I can match you with that. Uh-oh. Uh, oh. Say, I... Uh, no, I didn't know. No, you didn't know what you were getting into No, I here. didn't. But this, um, this thing I'm doing for Home Box Office, it's the sequel to another series that was very successful. He did called um, Time Was. Right. And this one's called Remember When. And uh, in doing this thing, some of the most incredible little bits of information that you can fill time with. Now, in our business, we need to fill time quite frequently, Constantly. don't we? And this may be one of this them. This is a uh, <laughs> propitious uh, moment right now. Now, here we have uh, four well-educated people. How many of us sitting here now, or in the audience for that matter, know, and this is deadly serious, who invented the brassiere? The idea that it had to be invented is startling to begin with, but in fact, there is I suppose a... someone finally said, hey, let's do something with those. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Somebody had to... Probably a doctor. Dr. No? Brazier. No, I believe Dr. Brazier. A, a, a woman invented the, what we know as the Brazier, and her name, and you're, you're hearing this correctly, is Caress Crosby. <laughs> she invented, this is, quote, the modern Brazier. I guess that's... Um, as opposed to the old steam-driven Brazier. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, um... What, uh, what, year, did, modern uh, what year did Caress uh, oh, do this? Yeah, I'm I meant to write that down, because that would be interesting to know, and I don't have that with me, but she had many other inventions, and uh, none of which had come, come through for her. I guess her <laughs> fortunes were sagging. And, uh, <laughs> She, uh, in Caress Crosby invented the... Do you have any more of these know little, the Brazier? Uh... Well, yeah, and here's one. Now, I do, as a matter of fact. Would you know, this sounds like a gag, who was the timekeeper of the Jack Johnson, Jess Willard heavyweight fight in 1915 in Havana? Now, you all know the name. Fidel Castro? <laughs> what the... No, that's not what it says here. Yeah. Now, what, why would we know that? We wouldn't, and yet you're going to be astonished. The timekeeper. The timekeeper of that fight. The initials are B M. <laughs> Bobby Morse. <laughs> no, but that does start with B M. Uh, 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 you fighter? all know the name. Fighter, like no, Jones? no. In fact, I think there was a television series named... Barney Miller? No. No. Yes. Bat Masterson. Bat Masterson? The same... The one Bat the Masterson? Same, who left the West and he became a uh, sports writer for the New York Telegraph. Um, and he was the timekeeper in that fight. Now, that's Land really of Ocean. Exciting. You what? folks are going to go home with something tonight. <laughs> yes. Some of them are going right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going with them. No, that's... Uh... Now, those are those... Though I find that kind of a memorabilia, if that is uh, such a thing, or... It's, uh, yeah, what intriguing. would you call that? Curiosa, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Now, I, th th this could get deadly, so I'll only do one more of these. But this, this is kind of fun. Uh, well, maybe you should be the judge no, of that. No, 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 no. Um, it's your show, after all. Uh, how can I say this now? In 1980... 
Right. All the miles that Americans will drive in their cars, private cars, the total number will equal how many one-way trips to the moon? Well, I mean, I want the exact answer, yes. Well, now, the moon is about 235,000 miles away. Well, that's more than I knew. Something like that, right? Close to that, yeah. 236,000. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was there last week. I just don't know. Uh, 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 how many round trips to the moon? Well, it's got to be a mi over a million. How, how, how many one-way trips to the moon would all the miles that Americans will drive in all the cars in 1980... I, I, I'm in awe of the kind of mind that can even know how to guess at this. I would say a couple of million. Six billion. Six billion? Six, B as in B-M. Billion. <laughs> billion. Which means that the, the, qu the quick ones among you have already calculated that Americans will drive one trillion four hundred billion miles. No wonder there's no gas. Right. Does that, that include Ed? Was that before Ed's trip? That, before my trip. that, that includes you. I'm glad you brought that up because I think I, I think I. Uh, we were going to do this earlier in the show. What is the name of the person who holds the long-handled fan? over a pharaoh, emperor, or monarch. You always see them in pictures, the one standing with the fan. Carlos. There is... <laughs> huh? Well, Carlos? No, I mean, no, there's a title. Carlos may have been one of these. this <laughs> commercial? Carlos. Was I warm? <laughs> uh, there is an answer for that, and if you really... Uh, don't go to bed before we give this to you. It'll ruin your day tomorrow. We'll be right back. How could anybody tune out now? That's what I say. You hook... I'll give you the name of, outside of Carlos. <laughs> Apparently, there is a word for that person. It's called an F L A B E L L I F E R. I guess a flabellifer would be the way you'd pronounce it. That is the title for somebody who stands. Man who holds that big fan uh, over a pharaoh, emperor, monarch. A flabe flabellifer. That's one of those questions most often asked by libraries around the country. The people call up and ask these questions, which you can do if you have an unusual. Hmm. Question, you call your library and they will go look it up for you. I bet that'll come up tomorrow. You know how you learn something new and then the next day uh, it, it yeah. comes up? I wonder, there's probably a word for that phenomenon, too, where something comes up the next day. Um, <laughs> I wonder if there are things for words like that. Words that, hmm, very, very rare words. Yeah, well, you, 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 you're, you're a word nut. Might be. You play anagrams all the time, don't yes, you? Yes, by the way, you know, that reminds me of something funny. Um, I, uh... I guess you shouldn't bill everything as funny uh, beforehand, should you? Uh, it reminds me of something possibly amusing. Uh, I th was going through some old carbons, and I found the first stuff I ever wrote for you on The Tonight Show. And, I, I, and in there, I found the first line that I ever... Are you serious? I had checked it as the first line you ever did of mine. You were in the show about 1960... Show. Well, that we came out here in 72, 64, 65? 60, I guess it would be 64. Yeah. yeah I think so. Yeah, the I had been line. writing on that um, that long, that Jerry Lewis show that so, uh, is so charitably forgotten, um, the two-hour live one that I think ABC is still paying for. What was the uh, What was the first line you wrote? The first line I wrote for you of that kind. This is weird. Uh, you had just come back from Vegas, you, right. and they had hired me while you were on vacation. You came back, and you said, incidentally, Las Vegas spelled sideways. If you rearrange the letters of Las Vegas, it spells salvages. And this got a sort of murmur. And then you said, uh, I realize that isn't funny, but a little old man in Maine has been asking me to do more anagrams. <laughs> now, remember how easily people laughed in those days? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the world's a rougher place now. And yes, it's, it's uh... harder. I know. Now we, now we have violence and drugs and the economy and panty but lines. In 64, that put the country away. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, that got an enormous laugh in the then. By the way, the last time I was on here, we were fooling around with anagrams, and you said there doesn't seem to be one for Carson. I have this curse of anagrams, sometimes jam my brain. And, and we said... Anagrams are taking a word and making another word out of all the letters in the word, right? Yeah, I rearrange the letters. Yeah. All the letters spell something Carson, else. Carson, all I can think of. Nar not, not Oscar. Uh, Nascor uh, and Rexon, and, but they don't mean anything. Acorns. Acorns. Acorns, yeah. 
AC or in it. I'd, now that must no, change I your had, whole outlook on life to know that to know all your life your name has been Acorns. acorns. Yeah. Is there one for Cavett? An anagram for Cavett? No, Cavett there isn't really. Uh, if you take Richard A. Cavett, you'd have catch it a rare VD. <laughs> Honestly. What's the weirdest anagram you've ever come up with? Or this? Spiro Agnew. No, no, no. Spiro Agnew. Using all the letters. Mm -hmm. Is it one word? No, it's a, a little, little sentence. Phrase, a little oh. sentence. Uh -huh. Spiro Agnew. Oh, my God, those are nuts. Oh, come on, play. <laughs> Spiro Agnew. Uh, is that the clock? Uh, I heard it. <laughs> no, I uh, heard you didn't win the big money. Didn't but... win the luggage and the new car, but... <laughs> All right, I give it up. Hey, Anybody want grow a penis? <laughs> is this... When, you, when you're away from the show, is this the way you spend your spare time doing these things? It's a real, it's a real mental curse. Was your father, not, well, your father was an English teacher. An English teacher, yeah, yeah but, but th that's misleading because he really would rather have been an athlete or an engineer or something. He didn't right. really want to be. Uh, I was a product of the depression or possibly a depression. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, cause sure. part of it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, it, um, it's funny because it'll come into your head anagrams at the worst times. Uh, Acorn. Uh, yeah. There's certain names like Gore Vidal, Viral Doge, Valid Ogre, I Love Drag. They're just, they, 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 you just, they won't stop. There, there are probably 45 anagrams for <laughs> yeah. Gore Vidal. And uh, Coincidence. it's a crazy sort of yeah. thing. I don't know, it's, some people... It's like acronyms. You remember acronyms, what titles stand for? Like, I see. I always have to remember what an, an acronym is like run, oh, NATO. Come, or... No, like NATO. That's oh, NATO, acronym. that's an acronym, yeah. You know, where they make up these long words for organizations. Yeah. Uh, or Nazi or Cito or those things are, are yeah. I, I, yeah. I heard today with the, the Russian plane, MG. You know, you're about the, the, M, the MG. It came because the two inventors, Mayakov and Grushnev or something like that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Would I, what, why would I lie? Oh, very true. You wouldn't. <laughs> this is the educational part <laughs> of the show. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but I, I never thought of that. No reason to at all. Mercedes Benz was named after the gentleman's daughter. Oh, was her name Mercedes? Her, no. Yeah, it wasn't Ben. <laughs> well, no, it wasn't Ben. Uh, no, it was, Mer it was Mercedes. was named after his daughter. And Volkswagen is um, in Germany. It's called a VW. No, that I didn't know. Yeah, VW is V, and V is W. So it, those are the, that's how you say oh, the, the letter. VW. I didn't know that. VW. Uh huh. And this uh, is like Ding Dong School late at night, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, you know, it's funny with if if you want to have fun with your Germans. Uh, <laughs> uh, they are not the, the most laughable, uh, <laughs> fun-loving race in the, in the no, world, are they? That remind me to tell you about that. Um, but uh, what, is, what, what is it? Um, very well. M Germans from certain sections of Austria, or, or German-speaking people from Austria, or certain sections of Germany, cannot say very well. They say very well. Hey, yeah. so, is, so if you say to them, say very well, they say very well. <laughs> Yeah, it's the truth. <laughs> Gotta sneak up on them. You can have no end of fun with them that way. But it's funny now, they, a German watching would find nothing funny about this. I've heard you talk on your show about going over there and being on a German interview show where they would ask you a question, then they would have to translate, mm. and there would be this, um, this silence. Well, I, I did one in... That, that's an oxymoron. If I said definitely in silence, that's an oxymoron, right? A definite... No, it have to be... Just the reverse. The opposite. A, the opposite. A, a, a de, a thundering de, silence. A thundering silence. That would be an oxymoron. Yeah. 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 But, uh, yes, I, uh, well, I did, I've done interviews in German, in Germany, because once the host, uh, Herr Schmieding, forgot his English, and I had to dredge up out of, you know, I can in panic, um, a course I'd taken in German years before, and I, I said things, but I made some errors. Uh, they reunited me with a, a bathing beauty sort, a Miss Universe. So years ago on the Jack Parr show, I had been brought out to interpret her. My German was fresher in those days. And this seven foot, beautiful, gorgeous, Viking-like girl came out and, and I, I interpreted with Jack for her. Well, they found her and, re and brought her back to meet me again years, years later. Did they have a kind of a German Ralph Edwards? Uh, that sort of, that yeah. sort of thing, yeah, yeah. This is your Leben. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And uh, she came out, and I thought it would be funny to say, you have grown. And I thought, Givox, and something. I said, Sie sind Givox. Uh, it turns out I said, you have been waxed. You have been waxed. 